inspecting and measuring the case. First thing I usually do is I'll go ahead and make sure everything is square. Um, you'll take a flat surface. Now, this is a, a straight edge. I've checked it on my uh, granite plate, so I know, I, I know I've got a good flat surface. You'll lay it across, take a feeler gauge, try it on both sides, and lay it across. Do it again. I usually do it three different directions, and then I also typically do it on these flat planes. That way you can find out any warpage that's in the center. Um, you do that for the every surface. Now I'm doing it up here at the head, same thing. Check it, check it, check it, check it. And that gives you a good indicator of those surfaces being flat. Pretty much a, a, a head surface on an engine like this, as long as you're within uh, two or three thousandths or less, you're good. This thing was perfectly flat. I couldn't even get a uh, one thousandth uh, feeler gauge under there. Same thing for this surface. I couldn't get a thousandth feeler gauge under it. Uh, I did have one ding in the case. And how I take care of a ding is you'll get a, a bastard file. And then you'll lay the file and you'll do what's called draw filing. You don't go across like this, you'll take too much material. But if you lay it flat, you can kind of pull it straight and pull it straight this way like this at different angles. And you'll get rid of any of those high spots and, and you're doing it over enough of a surface area, you'll keep everything flat. Uh, so make sure you get a, a, good, a, good bastard, or a, a good bastard file for that. And then uh, smooth off that surface. Work beautiful. I've already recleaned the case since I did it for real. Um, another thing I checked, I went ahead and checked the bearings. The, the, bearings in this, the bearings in this thing were nice and smooth, rotated great. I cleaned all the uh, nasty ass oil, or um, excuse me, all the nasty oil they had in here uh, from the factory. Uh, one thing that was critical though, inside this oil seal, there was zero lubrication. They didn't put any grease in there. There was no oil in there. Uh, there is a good chance that that seal would have fell, failed very prematurely because it was completely bone dry against the uh, shaft. So that was something that uh, really caught me whenever I disassembled this thing and cleaned it. All right, the last inspection that we need to do on this is we need to make sure that the bore is good. You'll take a bore gauge. Dial calipers or calipers are never accurate enough for any real machine work inside of rotating of an engine. Uh, even, even a really high quality brand of, uh, uh, of calipers is typically plus or minus a thousandth at best. So you just, they're, they're not accurate enough. Get yourself a bore gauge if you're gonna do much of this. I usually, first thing I'll do is I'll measure the top two different directions, mid-range, two different directions, bottom, two different directions, and then I'll come all the way up top to bottom and all the way down top to bottom from another angle. And what that does is allows me to check for any, uh, uh, make sure my hole's round, also gives me my diameter measurement, and uh, as well as uh, it uh, will let me know if there's any taper. Typically, any cylinder that has under a thousandth taper is, is well within your taper range. Uh, and then uh, this particular cylinder, uh, it, it was absolutely straight up and down. So I was real pleased with it. The cross hatch inside the cylinder is a uh, pretty good shape. Um, I also did uh, check it. It is a cast iron line cylinder, which uh, in that process, uh, we need to go to our next step, thinking of cast iron, checking the rings. Uh, the next thing on your clearance is you want to check is you take take one of your rings, doesn't matter which one, because you need to check all three of them. You'll place them inside your cylinder. I grab it like this, so as I ease into the cylinder, it will automatically compress it for me. Once you get it started into the cylinder, you can lightly pivot it. You just want to make sure that you don't break that ring going in. Um, then you take your piston, slip your piston in, Slide your piston in and push that ring down until you know it is good and square. It's not tilted or cocked inside that, that cylinder. Now that it's good and square, you take your feeler gauge, put it in between the gap of your rings and measure it. 
And uh, this one measured 13 thousandths, which is, which is great. At the end of everything, I'll leave uh, what I think a, a reasonable range is for your uh, gap. So pull it back out. Oh, when I pull them back out, I grab it by the, the side that is opposite of the, uh, or the gap. I pull it and pivot it toward the front, use both fingers and draw it straight out. And that helps minimize, again, it just minimizes the chance of breaking a ring. Uh, I've went ahead and measured all three. They all three measure really well. You're gonna see a few video clips of me taking the piston off of the rod by removing the wrist pin. I caution you to not do that at this time. I cannot locate a replacement piston, rod, or wrist pin. Uh, because the wrist pin is an interference fit with the piston, the risk of removing it and installing it back without damage is too great. I would leave the, the assembly together. Um, after you pull your uh, piston and rod assembly out of the engine to, to, uh, to clean your bore out real well, clean your piston and check your ring clearances, just leave that as a unit. You should be able to spray in around your uh, rod and wrist pin area adequately with like some carburetor cleaner or or a brake cleaner to flush out around the wrist pin uh, and then uh, you can take some oil and pretty readily re-lube that area to make sure that you you have a, a good oil coating in around that wrist pin and rod before you put the assembly back into your uh, block it is absolutely right now the the risk is just too high i went ahead and took it apart uh, to check the clearances and it, and it was very well machined. The uh, wrist pin and rod, the clearances are, are great. Um, and I just would hate to see someone disassemble that and not and do some damage, which I was a little nervous about. I'm always a little nervous about it myself, uh, especially if, if there's no replacement part. So uh, just want to let you know that uh, I really think you should just leave that as assembly so you're not going to see a video of me taking that apart and putting it back together. Uh, we're just going to deal with the whole assembly at that point. On to the rod. I have telescope engages. These things are, they take a lot of feel and a, and a lot of practice to actually get good at using these things. So when, if you get a set of telescope engages and start doing this yourself, uh, then uh, just take your time, learn. It's a, it's a, it, there's a lot of feel to this to where you can get accurate with it. But over a given period of time, you'll, you'll, you'll get it down. It'll take several tries at first. Um, so you'll get your rod. If you notice, this rod has numbers right here on the end. Make sure those numbers match. It also has some little marks right here that are embedded in the, uh, uh, into the uh, cap. And that just makes sure that you have your cap properly oriented uh, when you bolt it back on. Bolt it back on, torque it back down to where it's supposed to be. Uh, by the way, this, this protrusion right here, this is called an oil slinger. It just dips in the oil and just throws oil inside the motor to help keep it lubricated. Since I brought that up, something else you want to check, and I usually use you know a marker pin or something to feel, but there's a, a, a hole right here that leads from here down to the inside of your rod. What that does is this thing splashes oil, oil runs through that hole, that oil gets into your crank, in big in area lubricates it the chamfers on this thing are nice and smooth if they ever get whenever they uh countersink these things to chamfer them uh sometimes they'll leave a burr if there's a burr there get rid of the burr because that helps keep that oil from dripping down and running into that same thing up here well well done i mean the chamfer is just nice and smooth over the cross the top there's no burr and uh same thing on the inside nicely done that's how your wrist pin gets uh lubricated so you'll take your Snap gauge, put it inside the hole. I'm not going to go through how to really operate those now, but you'll measure. Take your micrometer and measure. And you'll learn how to feel for that. You'll just barely feel it touching. Uh, one thing, you know, holding a micrometer with a pinky, I had a, a guy I knew in a machine shop I worked at for quite a while. He had his pinky cut off in the middle of the machine, and he, uh, you ought to seen that guy try to hold a mic. It was, it was rather interesting. Uh, same thing, take your measurements of the big end, get it, take the appropriate mic, check, make your notes, and then that way you can compare it to your crankshaft. Um, then you will also need to measure your wrist pin. 
go across there. Usually, if, you know, usually measure your wrist pin in a couple of spots. That way you know it's still good and round and the size you need. Okay, let's move on to the piston. When you take a piston, you have your wrist pin where your wrist pin goes in right here. When you measure a piston, you have, okay, you have your skirts, you wanna measure approximately that area right there that's in line with the machining of your piston. So you'll have some skirts sticking up. This is usually the widest point of a piston is right in this area, right in here. That's usually roughly your widest area. Now you'll wanna measure down toward the flange a little bit and then up toward the piston, but that's usually gonna be your widest spot. Uh, and you also wanna make sure that you do not measure on the wrist pin side. The, the pistons are not round. Um, they're, they're usually a little bit oval and you wanna measure perpendicular to the wrist pin. So you take that measurement, and then that's what you'll compare to your cylinder. Uh, all the measurements that I took on this thing, oh, uh, one other thing, you also, another critical measurement is you'll take a ring, make sure that you, you do it in the appropriate groove, top ring, top groove, you'll put it inside the piston, you'll take your feeler gauge, you'll measure the gap between the ring and the ring gap itself, and it should be around a thousandth or so, uh, it, you know, it can be up to a couple thousandths, but at the end of the video, again, I'll leave a list of uh, what I think the measurement should be. Everything on this thing was, was in pretty good shape. Um, should, I've got about a two, uh, a two thousandth clearance between the, uh, the big end of the rod and the crankshaft. Uh, got just barely over a thousandth clearance between the wrist pin and the uh, rod. And the same thing with the wrist pin and the piston, with the exception that it does have a slight interference fit. That hole will be a slight friction fit going in, but it actually kind of makes the, it, it holds that pin in the piston and allows the piston to adjust wear on the rod and not on the piston. On this chart I just put up, You'll see the actual measurements that I took on the, uh, the clearances on my particular engine that I have. I've seen at least two different versions of this small diesel, so I'm not 100% sure that all the components would be the same as mine. So I decided that it would be better to, to actually give you guys a general range of clearances instead of actual individual component measurements. Um, so if, if you look at this chart, if you, if you measure your components in your engine and they fall within the range that you see here, that is generally considered acceptable uh, and for, for a rebuild and something that should still sustain some reliability for quite some time. So that's the reason I put this chart together. Uh, it's not super specific because I really have no idea if your engine's gonna be identical to mine, uh, but it should get you in the ballpark. So hopefully this will help you guys.